Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy and I own the Water East Store and the Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Today we're talking about how to do the installation on a Viqua E4 ultraviolet disinfection system. So this is the large 22 gallon per minute system. Uh, the procedure is exactly the same whether it's a D4, E4 or an F4. It's just different uh, gallons capacity of the units. So the first thing you have to consider is uh, pretreatment requirements. Each of these systems require a, a few things. Um, first is that you have to have ultraviolet transmittance of 75% or higher. In other words, your water has to be fairly clear for the ultraviolet light to uh, kill the bacteria and to get that 22 gallon per minute rating. The next thing you have to make sure is the iron content has to be 0.3 parts per million or less. Hardness, seven or less. So once you've considered that, then we also have to look at some other pre-filters. So these are the two here that I recommend. The first is a five micron pre-filter. So again, that's a pre-treatment requirement that Vico requires and a carbon filter. So a carbon filter is a, a great addition to the whole system and definitely recommended because what that does, it removes chemicals from the water, herbicides, pesticides, that kind of thing. So the next thing you have to think about is where you're going to install the system. So this would be installed after your other uh, water treatment equipment. So in other words, if you have an iron filter, if you have a tannin filter, a water softener, all those things, the water would go through those things first. They would pre-treat pre -treat it, <laughs> pre-treat the water, and then it would flow in through this end and out through this end. So if you're not sure about how these ultraviolet disinfection systems work, click this link up here. It'll take you right to a YouTube video of mine that explains how an ultraviolet disinfection system will kill the bacteria in your home or your cottage. Okay, so the next thing we have to think about is configuration. And uh, so this will all be installed on a piece of wood. I uh, recommend a piece of plywood or solid core wood that you would mount all this to. And it should be configured somewhat similar to how I have it set up here, is that you have the pretreatment filters here, and then the water flows through the ultraviolet light and goes on here. And the electronics, we want to place that above any of the plumbing because we have to make sure that in the, in the summertime or a high humid uh, lo location that these pipes are going to sweat and they're going to drip. And you don't want water dripping on this uh, controller up here. So the other thing you have to think about is the ultraviolet light. I mean, typically it, the best way to mount it is vertically. It can be installed horizontally, but vertically is the best way. So you need to leave at least 20 inches of space above the light, uh, above the stainless steel housing to be able to change the light and to service the, the quartz sleeve. This can be mounted horizontally, like I say, so if you're in a crawl space and you have very limited space, this can be mounted horizontally. But again, keep in mind where the controller is because this will sweat um, and you'll have water dripping from it. So uh, be careful of that. Okay, so once you've got it configured, you're going to want to make sure you put a ball valve on before the filters and that will make maintenance on this a lot easier. And this system will accept one inch plumbing. So again, 22 gallon per minute flow rate, that's a high flow rate. So if you do have one inch plumbing, you can run that all the way through this whole system. For this uh, illustration purposes, I ran it in three quarters of an inch, but one inch uh, works fine. So you want to put a ball valve at the beginning of it. You want to put a ball valve at the end of it. I'd like to mention at this point that we do offer discount pricing and free shipping on the systems, the replacement lamps, the filters, the filter housings, the whole thing. Just click the link up here to take you right to our e-commerce store. So you're going to want to grab the quartz sleeve with a, a nice cloth like I have here. So you don't want to handle it with your fingers. You can touch the very end with your fingers, but not the sides. So then you want to feed it in here. So make sure you feed it in nice and straight inside the, the stainless steel housing. And then you'll see that it bounces a little bit. So that will give you a good indication that it is straight. And you can see the O-ring is about three quarters of an inch from the end. And then you want to use this gray bolt that they Viqua makes. And that's what's going to hold the quartz sleeve in place and the lamp is going to be screwed inside of it. So again, just make this hand tight. And again, using the cloth, I'm going to grab the UV lamp and uh, you can grab it from the ends here, but you can't grab the sides with your bare hands. So feed that inside. And you want to tighten that. So this tightens just to a full stop. And that's, that's just fine. So then what we want to do is we want to do the, the electrical, uh, the ground connection. So it comes with this uh, little slip on the end of the connectors and it's going to attach to this bolt over here. So we're just going to unscrew that. All right, and then we just feed it through both of these. So one is the ground and the other is the strain relief. So you want to feed the bolt through both 
like so. And then using a Phillips screwdriver, you can tighten that. Like that. I always like to keep it a little bit back from the, uh, the collar here that swivels so it doesn't interfere with that in the future. All right, so once we've got that tightened up, then we can turn this collar so that the pins line up. You can see there's four here and there's two here. So just line those up, that, and that, and then press it down till it snaps on both sides. So the next step is to plug it in. So here, I would suggest you plug it into a surge suppressor like this one here. The surge suppressor would be mounted uh, obviously above the plumbing in your installation. Again, we want to make sure that no condensation drips on it. And uh, so now it's uh, powering up. So this is uh, the LCD, this is the Viqua LCD interactive controller. And uh, I have a great video that gives you a lot more information about it if you click on it up here. And uh, so now it's, it's powering up. So when it powers up for the first time, it'll ask you what language uh, to select. In this case, it's English that's been pre-selected. And then it's also gonna ask for model selection. So um, it's already selected that it's an E4, but you, if you're replacing the controller, you may have to tell it what, what uh, UV system you have. And then you press select. And now it's reminding you about product registration. So again, you need to register this product for the warranty. And uh, now it's, it says lamp warning and there's a flashing going on. And what that's telling you is that uh, the lamp is coming up to full intensity. It's not there yet. And uh, so whenever you initially install this or whenever you change the lamp, that will happen. So that's completely normal. So it'll flash like that for about a minute or so. So after a short time, you'll hear a click from the controller and you'll see that the screen changes and it'll say lamp life 365 days remaining. And that's the countdown timer to when it's time to replace the lamp after one year of use. You'll all, it'll also dis alternate back and forth the display and also show some dealer information or VQuiz contact information. And, uh, and again, there's a lot more information on this, but like I say, the, uh, the video I mentioned earlier about the LCD controller will share that information with you. Okay, so once it's up to full intensity, then you can put the system into uh, into use. So um, now what you can do is you can start to open the inlet valve and start to fill every the whole system with water. And uh, so I will only open it partially initially so you can as it's filling um, you don't have a huge spray of water coming out if you do have a leak. So then check for leaks once you make sure you don't have any leaks then you can open this up a hundred percent. And uh, and then you can go to the outlet and you, you can open that up again partially. Um, double checking for leaks and then open it up all the way. Now what you can do is go somewhere in the home that has a large flow like a bathtub or a laundry sink or something like that and, uh, and run the water through there. That way any debris that was entered into the system uh, will get flushed out and any of the, the fines from the carbon filter etc will get uh, flushed out. The last stage before putting it to service is you need to disinfect it. So again, I have a great link up here to a YouTube video that shows you how to disinfect an ultraviolet disinfection system. And uh, you'll need to do that before you put it into service. And that's it. If you like what you saw today, please click the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified about all the new videos that become available on this channel. I'd also really appreciate if you could share this video with your Facebook friends. For some more information, you can go to our websites, either thewatereaststore.com or thewaterstoremidland.com. And again, I'm Gary the Water Guy from the Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Thanks for watching.